Okay, so for all you out there that are looking to pass the uh, the GED exam and are you know, uh, preparing for the math section, which you obviously are going to have to if you're going to be passing a GED, I'm going to give you my top math shortcuts here, okay? So shortcuts, you know, um, you know people kind of think of them as maybe cheating. I'm I want to say let's work, you know, uh, smarter, not harder, right? So <laughs> you still should know how to do the math behind this, but I want to give you a couple good tips here, some good shortcuts that I think every uh, student or every person taking the GED uh, should know. All right, so the first one is going to be on fractions. Now, um, a lot of students uh, just this is a common area where students just make a lot of mistakes, okay? It's kind of the thing, uh, many students also say, oh yeah, I know fractions, I'm good with fractions, and then they, they make a lot of errors. They're, <laughs> they're like a legend in your own mind, right? Oh no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You know, we're all that way with a lot of things, right? Like, I know that until you actually have to do it, and then you go, wait a minute, and you, you know, get, get a little confused. So, um, for the GED, you definitely want to know how to do fractions. Now, multiplying and dividing fractions, this is very easy, very straightforward, okay? I'm not going to get into it in this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and invite you to my free GED math course, um, gedmathlessons.com. I'll leave a link to it in, in the description um, of this video. But this is really straightforward. Where students tend to make a lot of mistakes is when you're, they're adding and subtracting fractions because this is where you have to deal with finding the LCD, right, the lowest common denominator, and students kind of struggle with it. So I'm going to give you a real good um, uh, shortcut on how to deal with these problems. So let's take a look at an actual problem. Let's say we had two-thirds plus one-fifth. Now this is actually a very easy uh, problem to do, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to pause the video and see if you can do this problem and you ought to be able to do this problem in like less than 30 seconds. Okay, so go ahead and give yourself a little pop quiz and then I'll show you my little uh, shortcut here. Okay, so let's see um, how you did. Now, two thirds plus one fifth, remember, in order to add or subtract fractions, you need to have the same denominator, okay? So you, you, here I have three and here I have five, right? So what's the lowest common denominator? That's another little quick uh, question. So hopefully you answered 15. Now what I'm showing you here is not the shortcut yet. I'm just showing you the, the main process, okay? So the lowest common denominator is 15, all right? So in order to make this denominator 15, I have to multiply it by five, which means I have to multiply the numerator by five. So that's five times two, this is 10, right? Then I gotta do the same thing over here. I'm going kind of quickly here because I, I don't wanna turn this video into a whole, um, lesson on how to add and subtract fractions. Go to my free GD uh, math course. I get into all this, right? So this is going to be uh, three fifteenths. Okay. So if you understand that, that's very good. Okay. And then here, once you have the same uh, denominator, okay, the common denominator, it's the lowest one, i.e., the lowest common denominator. We simply add the numerator. So that'd be ten plus three, thirteen over fifteen. Okay. So that's the uh, direct approach to doing the problem, the, uh, not only the direct, the way you're taught and a, uh, the correct way of doing it as well, okay? However, this problem, very easy, very straightforward. I'm actually going to show you the shortcut, okay? I like to call this method the bow tie method, <laughs> okay? The bow tie method. This looks like a little bow tie, right? And it will help kind of, uh, you know, um, remember this procedure. So here's what you do. Anytime you're adding and subtracting fractions, okay, this works 100% of the time, you can do the following, okay? You could take this number here, just follow the pattern, okay? You're gonna take that number, you're gonna multiply by this number, okay? So that's gonna be what? Five times two is 10, all right? Now because this is an addition problem, we're gonna put a plus sign right here, all right? Now, we're gonna go, we're gonna take this number to the bottom left and we're gonna go up this way. Uh, you, you kind of see this bow tie uh, pattern uh, taking place, right? So three times one is three. So this is uh, um, the steps of the problem. So it's gonna be this number times this number. You're gonna put that there. Now, if this is a plus or a minus, you're gonna put this right here. If this is a plus problem or addition problem. Now you're gonna go this times this, okay? Which is three. And you're gonna put that over 
one big fraction bar over this, the two, the, uh, the, the denominators being multiplied by one another. So this is going to be 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay? Now I just simplify that. 13 over 15. Done. Okay? Very, very quick. Let's go ahead and like, see this. I'm going to show you this uh, again. Okay? Erase this. 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. And then we'll do another problem. Okay? So 2 thirds plus 1 fifth. So in my mind, I'm going, okay, 2 times 5, that's 10. 3 times 1 is 3. This is addition, so I'm adding over 3 times 5, 15. 13 over 15. Done. Okay? Now, I'm, my mind, I'm kind of like running like a, um, uh, a computer program. I'm not even thinking, right? I'm just following steps. Let's look at a more complicated uh, problem, okay? Let's say I had uh, 2 sevenths plus 3, um, oh, let's say three fourths. Okay. So once again, I can go right to it. So two, uh, four times two is eight plus, because it's a plus problem. Seven times three is 21 over seven times four is 28. Okay. So eight plus 21, 29 over 28. Very, very straightforward. Okay. This also works with a, a subtraction. It's a little bit, uh, you got to be a little bit more careful with it, but this is a, a I mean, this is just a great uh, tool to have as a shortcut, okay? The only thing with um, the bow tie method for shortcut, it will always give you the right answer, but you may not get um, the answer fully reduced, okay? Let's see if I can come up with an example. Let's see, uh, two fours plus, let's say, one half, okay? So this is going to be two times two is four, Right, so just follow the pattern. I'm going this way, okay. Four times one is also four, and this is an addition problem, okay. And then four times two is eight. So here I have four plus four is eight over eight. Now your answer might be like this, but you'll actually have to kind of reduce it. In this case, obviously the answer is one, okay. If you would have seen this, two fourths is actually the same thing as one half, and one half plus one half is one. Okay, but that's the only kind of um, uh, thing that can that that might come up with the bow tie method is that you may have to reduce your answer to see um, uh, to see what uh, um, to get your final answer, and especially on a GED to kind of like pick the right problem. Okay, because if you're ended up with the let's say ten over sixteen. Right, that answer is not fully reduced. Okay, you gotta you gotta simplify it, right? So two goes into ten, five, and two goes into uh, sixteen, eight. All right, bow tie method for fractions, and there is a lot of fractions on a GED. Okay, excellent backup method. But remember, you gotta take this shortcut in context of of knowing how to you know multiply and divide, and knowing a little bit more about you know fractions. Okay, um, but it's something that uh, you know, it's an excellent tool. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something real quick. What if you were given this? A over B plus C over D. Now you're like, wow, uh, that's kind of crazy. You know, would you have something like this on a GD? Mm, potentially. But if you knew that bow tie method, okay, this is very straightforward. So if you're saying, well, what's the lowest common denominator? I don't, I don't know. Well, just follow the bow tie method. D times A, I'm going this way, right? is in, in algebra, we just write that as A times D, AD. That means these two being multiplied by one another. Plus B times C is just BC. Okay, when you write two variables next to one another, that means that they're being multiplied by uh, one another over these two being multiplied, BD. That's it. This is the correct answer, all right? So this bow time method is, is really, you know, uh, you know, it's key, it's critical for you, you know, to know in, in algebra and, and beyond, okay? All right, let's get into our next tip. And this one, I, if you watch my videos on uh, YouTube or my, some of my or take my free GD math course, this shortcut has got to be in the back of your mind at all times, okay? And this is the plug-in, the plug-in tr um, uh, tip. This is especially important for when you see equation problems. And I, and I put this into a lot of my videos because um, it's such a critical thing uh, for students to know, especially on anything that's a multiple choice exam, right? Now, depending on 
what they're doing with the GED. I know it's on computer. Um, some there might be, you know, uh, unless they're changing the format, there could be multiple choice. You could actually be entering the problem. But if you're faced with a multiple choice exam, okay, and you're dealing with an equation problem, this is a this is an excellent uh, technique. Okay, a shortcut to get the right answer. Let me give you, um, let me give you a uh, an example. Let's say you have an equation here. I say solve this equation, right? And I'm going to give you choices. Um, if, uh, x is equal to zero, right? Maybe x is equal to one, and maybe x is equal to two. All right, maybe C D. Maybe this is like none of the above. All right. So you have two choices here. You either need to know how to solve this equation. This is a quadratic equation. You know, solve it, show all your steps, get the answer, whatever it might be, and then choose from uh, the various options here, right? That's the, the uh, direct uh, path, okay? But a shortcut, and this is like, you know, for beyond even a GED, any test that's multiple choice is the following. When you see an equation, all right, problem, something with an equal sign in it, and you have multiple choice, one of the safest ways to play this problem out to ensure that you're going to get the right answer is to plug in each of one of these values and check to see which is the answer. Okay, let me show you. So let's check for whether to see if this is the correct answer. So what we're going to do is replace all the x's in this equation with zero and then see how this play, see how this um, um, plays out. So let me show you. So here, I gotta replace the x's with zero. Okay, so I have zero squared is zero, zero times two is zero, right? So that's just a zero, four times zero is zero. And if you just kind of looked at this, this is all gonna be zero, right? Plus one is equal to zero. So when you look at this, it's just one is equal to zero, okay? Now, the way you can determine whether x in fact x equals zero was in fact the solution is you got to look at the final uh, statement here if the left hand value is equal to the right hand value then this value this number here is the solution so we can see one is not equal to zero that's not <laughs> they don't balance it's not true so guess what this is not the solution you understand so what we do is we throw that out and like okay that's not the answer and we go to the next guy now, when you're doing this as a shortcut on on uh, your exams, okay, you want to start with the easiest numbers first. So let's go to one, okay? Let's try one real quick. Okay, so one squared is one. One times two is two. Minus four times one is four. Plus one is equal to zero. So I want to go ahead and just challenge you real quick. Pause this video and see if you can simplify this. I'll be curious to see how you uh, do, okay? All right, so 2 minus 4, what is that? So if you wrote 2, you would be incorrect. This is negative 2, negative 2, right? This is the same thing as 2 plus a negative 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. So now I have negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 is equal to 0, okay? Once again, this is not true, so this is not the answer either, okay, this final statement. Now, why did I kind of like give you a little pop quiz right here? Um, because it was likely that, you know, a lot of you out there still need to work on uh, your positive and negative numbers. So you got to have that down, okay, your end, what they call your integers. So there's really not really too many shortcuts um, with respect to that. I have a video on my uh, on my channel here. I think it's one of the top videos on the rules for positive and negative numbers. Take a look at that, and then obviously go come on over to my uh, GED Math Lessons course. So anyways, these two tips here will, will really benefit you on any math exam, certainly on the GED. Um, so remember them, okay? Remember them. And, and obviously, you know, you need to know your basic order of operations and your, your positive and negative number uh, rules. So... Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I make a lot of these type of tips. Uh, I'm always teaching, you know, uh, and I do have a lot of uh, focus on the GED uh, math because there's such a big need out there uh, for it. I have um, all so many people that use my site, my free math course, GEDMathLessons.com. Uh,
Yeah, I created that about four, four or five years, um, maybe about four years from the date of this video. And I've had thousands of people used it with great success. And, and it's just, you know, it's really given me a, more of a passion to help more of you out there, you know, pass the GED. It's important, okay? You got to you gotta do this. And the new GED or the newer version uh, of it from since uh, 2014 has become uh, more challenging. There's no, unfortunately, there is no actual shortcut. Back in the day, you can kind of like maybe cram for it and, you know, there's some kind of trick. So if anyone's offering you a full shortcut, you know, hey, the three days and you can pass, you know, you're just gambling. You're trying to get the lotto ticket to pass the GD, right? So you got to learn some math. So these math shortcuts, okay, these are just kind of more efficient ways to, to think about uh, things and you should use them, okay? But they're not, uh, this is not going to cover everything you need to know for the GED. All right, well, listen, please subscribe to my channel, check out my uh, free course, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.